All right, guys, I have determined that now that I have this awesome Mooney that I really enjoy flying, I am never going to finish my Zenith Cruiser. Oh, did we get interrupted by that awesome intro? What was I saying? Oh, yeah, now that I have this Mooney, I'm never going to finish my Cruiser unless I actually get these wings painted and get back to work on it. What? <laughs> did I fool you guys again? <laughs> That's two videos in a row. Oh man, I am so good at this. I think I'm gonna get rid of my airline job and become a full-time comedian. <laughs> you guys are too easy. Oh shit. All right, I've had my fun with the Mooney. Now it's time to get back to work on this cruiser. Let's get this wing primed and painted. Well, for the first time in about 25 years, we've actually had a sunny day in Michigan. So I decided it was time to get this wing scuffed. All you need really is a Scotch-Brite pad and a bucket full of soapy water. And I used that to scuff up the aluminum. I started with the bottom, and I think doing the bottom probably took 45 minutes or an hour maybe. Of course, the hard part is getting around all the rivets. Once that was done, I had a buddy come over and we flipped it over so I could uh, scuff up the top. And then uh, after the top was done, it was ready to hang from this jungle gym. Well, in case you're wondering how I hung this wing, I decided to hang it by the four flapper on brackets. Because really, unless you paint it flat on a workbench, there's just no way to hold this wing and rotate it. So I have four chains I bought at Home Depot. The chain I use is rated at 450 pounds. So I'm pretty sure it's strong enough to hold the wing. And what I do is I wrap it around the top where you can see I've kind of doubled up some two by fours. And I clamp the chain together. And then I bought a, about a three foot piece of wire at Home Depot. And I cut about six or eight inch lengths. And as you can, if you look closely in the bottom of the chain, you, I have a, a wire that I bend that just goes through the holes for the where the screws go through on the flapper on bracket. Normally when you apply alodyne to aluminum you put it on really wet and then you hose it off. That obviously creates a big environmental problem because you're putting all these chemicals into the ground and into the drinking water. I didn't want to do that and I learned from another builder who learned an, a method from two a and mechanics that have used this for years on airliners and also in the restoration of a B-17, a B-25, and a DC-3 that they've worked on. What I did was I took the alodyne and I thinned it 50% or one-to-one -one with water. I dipped the rag in the solution and I squeezed the rag out so that it's wet but not soaking wet or dripping wet. And I simply wipe the entire surface of the wing with this wet rag. And I don't rinse the alodyne off, I just let it air dry. So I'm not rinsing any chemicals into the ground. So this is how I'm doing. I know it's different than what's normally, uh, how it's normally used. And I know you're going to put in the comment section how I'm doing it wrong and my airplane's going to fall out of the sky. I know, I know. But this is how I chose to do it. I think there's a lot of proof that this works well. And uh, I've talked to a lot of guys about it that have used this method. So anyway, I'm not advocating it. I'm not telling you to do it like this. I'm simply showing you in this video how I am applying alodyne to my wings. You can take it or leave it. I really don't give a poop. Now, of course, in order to prime the wings, I had to get the paint booth set back up. So I moved the Mooney way up the taxiway so it's out of the way of any overspray. I rebuilt the paint booth uh, and then I got started priming. What I did was I start, I like to go around all the edges first. So I just, I didn't show it on the video because I forgot to start the camera. But the first thing I did was I laid down on the floor and I sprayed the leading edge of the wing. Then I went to the top of the wing and I did the trailing edge. And then I did the top and then I went around back and did the bottom. So this is the first coat and I'm going east-west and then when I did the second coat I went north-south so I did a one cross coat. It went on real nice. There's a little bit of dust in it that I'll, uh, I'll sand out before I paint but it looks real nice and I can't even tell you how happy I am to finally have a wing primed. 
Now I go back to work tomorrow for four days. When I come home, I'll have two days off and I'll be able to spray the blue. And then I go back to work again. So by the time I get back from the second trip, the paint will be dry. Here's what it looks like just hanging in a paint booth after I primed it. Primer went on real nice. I'm real happy with it. Looking forward to getting it painted blue. All right, next, after, well, actually I did this before I primed the wing, but I moved the fuselage back out into the uh, open part of the hangar where I can get to it. And I'm going to get start getting some of the little things done. Right here, I'm just removing this top strip. It's all painted white. It's actually ready to rivet on. I just have to thread the holes that are in the spar. Here, I've decided to finally rivet these pieces on. I just like waiting as long as possible to rivet things just in case they have to come off for something. But I can't think of any reason why any of these pieces will need to come off again. So I decided to rivet them. They are now, well actually the right side is riveted on and I ran out of rivets to do the left side so I have to order some more rivets from Zenith. Well, after it's riveted on, I went on my computer and I cut out a experimental sticker out of my vinyl graphics. I'm using silver just because I think it looks really nice on the white. So these letters, if you don't know, they have to be two inches tall. And I can make them two inches tall and vary the length of the decals. So I just made them to whatever size I thought would look good on the aluminum piece. So after I cut them out, I peel them off. There's a top layer that has to be put on. And once that's put on, they're ready to install in the airplane. So the next thing I need to do is finish up this wing here. This panel is ready to rivet on. I just need to get it riveted. Then I can scuff this wing up and once that one's painted, removed from the paint booth, I'll get this one in there and prime it and paint it. Then on the fuselage, I'm just going to start finishing up the doors so I can get the door glass riveted onto the frames here. I need to paint the yellow and blue on this window trim piece and uh, figure out how to get my wheel pants mounted after they're mounted I can hook up the brake lines I just have to do a little bit of trimming on the cow and I can get that painted and then just little things like baffling and all kinds of little details yet like just running the wires and the pedostatic tubes and things like that to the wings I have to on the back end here I still have to connect up the rudder pedals. I actually need to finish making the elevator push rods, or not push rods, but cables that are on the inside of the fuselage. And on the top window, all these are ready to rivet, but I'm not gonna rivet them. I bought uh, stainless steel 632 screws that I'm gonna use, but I have to figure out how I'm gonna secure the back end. Once I do that, I can screw this on, remove the plastic from the windshield, get this fairing screwed on, and kind of finish all that up. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you liked the video. Don't forget, like, subscribe, and visit aircraftstickers.com and buy a cool sticker for your airplane. See you on the next video.